My God, I could never imagine I would be at a TED conference, TEDx conference like this. But I'm here and I'm going to talk about what makes a 21st century teacher. I have some supporters here with me today. Kevin is here from Appleby College. Hey, Kevin, you promised to cheer for me. So do that, okay? <laughs> and my husband is here. Rajiv is here with me. Son wanted to be here. The other one is in Seattle, so you couldn't be here. And um, my younger one wanted to come, but he had a lot of assignments due, so he couldn't make it. And Appleby College, hi. I hope you're watching me right now. So this is where I am. Is it coming up? Yeah, I think it's, yeah. No, not there yet. So what makes a 21st century teacher? And I'm going to talk about why all the teachers should be looking at that and why I think it's important for everybody, every teacher to do what I suggest we do. Have a look at this cartoon. I got this from the internet some time back, and I love this somehow because when people look at me, they think I might be a teacher like this one. <laughs> and maybe I was some time back like this teacher and felt really proud about myself because, see, I'm standing here, I know it all, and I can teach you all, and you learn it all. That's the way we were, right? Learn it. I say it, you learn it, and that's the correct thing. No questions asked, nothing. That's what some teachers used to be. But that can't happen anymore. So it's a story about a journey for myself, for a lot of other teachers. And this journey is from that chalkboard that you see on the left side up till to a tablet computer that I use these days at Appleby. So that's what we used to do our teaching, and a lot of other technology. It's been a long journey, not in terms of years, but in terms of efforts. And a lot of learning involved in this journey. Because every step that we take, is not an easy one at any point of time. It is very intimidating for anyone, especially in our generation, to, do, to take. So it's been what a lot of people have helped me. The place where I work has so many facilities and state-of-the-art equipment that if we dare to use those things, it's, it's an easier journey to take. At home, I have three experts who are really tech savvy, my sons and my husband, and then my students. I wouldn't deny that I learn a lot from my students themselves. And that's what a teacher should be, learning from your students. Use the facilities, learn from the younger guys. And that's when you become the in-teacher. So what should a 21st century teacher be? To become a 21st century need, we need to understand our students. And that is the key. Because unless we understand whom we are trying to serve, we are not good teachers, so we need to understand. So that's the first thing I want to talk about is, what does a student look like these days? The kids are not born with an umbilical cord. Mothers, please remember, they are born with a computer cord these days. <laughs> they are born with a computer cord. They are of a Twitter generation. They need only 140 characters to give the message. <laughs> when I started with Twitter, it was really hard for me because I'm used to long statements, and being a teacher, I love to talk. So long statements, and I said, oh my god, it's not sending my message, so I kept reducing it. Now I've learned a bit, but still it's hard for me, but for them, it's easy. The language that they talk, MSN, OMG, the first time I learned it, I, very, I went in front of my class and I said, OMG, Dr. Uja, you know that? They were so happy. So when you talk in their language, they feel comfortable with you. So that's the first. These are the things that we need to do as teachers. Facebook. I'm not on Facebook for my personal reasons, but I think it's a great platform, if used correctly, for social networking. Our generation thinks, oh, we used to meet with people and we are such wonderful people, we are very social, but trust me, my kids know everything about my relatives before I come to know about them. <laughs> I, the other day I said, you know, this girl has become one of the trustee, student trustee members in a school. Yeah, I know, you didn't know that? So they know more about friends and relatives than we do because of Facebook and we need to understand that. We can never tell them that you are not aware, because they are. And they know a lot than what we think they do. 
So st just look at these tools. Did we have them? I didn't have them. I didn't have any of these tools when I was studying. And they have all of these tools to study. At Appleby, everybody has a tablet computer. They can write on it. They can read from it. They have every facility to them. I have that tablet computer to teach, which is so convenient because I never stand like this in front of the board. I teach like this because I write on my tablet. It's projected there. So they have all the communication done. It's just not for communication. It is also to learn and to teach. All the tools are available to them. And the other things, the webcam and the iPod, all of this is there. So their vocabulary. Whenever we go to a country, we try to learn a few words. So I am stepping into students' countries, right? So now, what is the meeting about? For them, it's MSN, chat rooms, and Adobe Connect. This is what the meeting looked like. Look at that picture. <laughs> There's a clip art. I've used a lot of clip art here. So this is what their meeting looks like. We have our different meetings in a different way. Networking, Facebook and Twitter. Just look at this vocabulary. What is a mouse? The first thing that'll come to their mind is this. Music, bug, firewall, and transferring files. It's a different world, and we need to become different teachers. We have to. There is no other way. And we have to show them respect. We cannot deny the fact that they are different. And as teachers, we have to, again, have the courage to become different. So how did I get here? I have all the tech behind me, technology. And in August, I was at a conference called Science on Stage, where I was invited by the Canadian Synchrotron uh, facility in Saskatoon. And then we had pedagogical discussions, and I was a team which was discussing what makes a 21st century science teacher, because it was a science conference. And once we started discussing this, with my team, who was the teachers for, for, from all over Canada, and one teacher had come from Scotland. And it was a very, very good discussion. And they loved that I'm here and talking about the discussion that we had there. <clears throat> and we realized that we need to actually do something and talk more about what makes a 21st century teacher. So what did we do? We developed, first thing we said, we need to develop a toolbox of student skills, and then we need to make a list of pedagogical skills required for the teacher, and then positive uses of technology, because that is the tool that we should be using. And few ideas for effective assessment methodology, because that is the centerpiece of everything. For teaching, that is the centerpiece. So we have a triangle there, which one of the teachers developed, and the assessment is in the center. When I was studying, or when I started teaching, we said we need to develop skills to learn to learn. All of us have heard that phrase. Each one of us have heard that. But these days, that's not enough. It's just not about learning to learn. It is also about reading from the media, from the internet, from your Twitters, from anywhere possible and also critically analyze. And the reason for that is, it is so the knowledge and the news is so freely available that the credibility can be at stake sometimes. And a student has to be trained or educated to actually see if it is worth reading or not, or if it is critical. He has to critically analyze whatever he reads. And then the student also needs to have real inquiry skills to question what he, observe, he or she observes. And then, of course, there is an understanding of risk. The risk taking is an important skill to have. So what is the other things? So if you see that list here, the knowledge I have kept at the end. As teachers before, we all thought we are all about imparting knowledge. It's not that anymore. Sometime back, when I started writing for a publisher, I heard somebody say, this might be the last book, textbook ever written. Because every th the content is always there. The knowledge is there, so freely available for anybody to use. It is about the other things that's, import that, that's becoming more and more important as we go. And this is the reason a 21st century teacher needs 
a lot of professional development. And the reason for that, just not imparting the knowledge, but exploring new ways of teaching. So how can a 21st century teacher improve his or her skills? Of course, by learning and exploring. Effective and continuous professional development. And that is very, very important. And I'm very fortunate to have that. Interacting with peers, not only within, but even outside. That is to learn from everyone that surrounds you in your profession. And for that, the recognition is important too. So uh, there are a lot of teachers who are doing so much professional development, the recognition, I, and places like this, this is where we get recognized. And it's a, it's a wonderful opportunity for any teacher, or any, any professional for that matter. So what will a 21st century teacher do for technology now? Have the courage, like I said. That is important, have the courage. Because at a, lot of at a lot of times I see that when I'm using a new technology or a new method or a tool, I'm not very proficient with this. I try to, line, uh, uh, I try to learn, I dive into it, and I'm trying to learn to swim, and then a student walks by and he knows it better than me or she knows it better than me. I never feel afraid to learn from them because I know they are better at it. And that is the courage that a teacher needs to have because we are not experts sometimes and we can learn from them a lot. Deal with paperless learning environment. I hardly print anything, except for the test maybe, or test, we never print anything. Everything is done, it's, it's totally paperless. The book, the assignment, submissions, everything is just paperless. And I love that because I don't have to carry things around. Degree of online interaction is important these days for the students, I think. Just not emails, but other ways, where you can chat with them, help them out with certain things. It's instant, and it's appealing to them, and they're used to that mode. And then collaborate in the same way with them all the time. So of course, I talked about all of that. Support new learning, that's important. Assessment, I'm not sure if a lot of you will be interested in that, but the key here, the point that I'm trying to make in these slides is that the assessment has to be in many forms. It's just not printing out a test, giving it to the students, and they're writing it. And we try to do that a lot. Sometimes for an evaluation, it's just a video. Assessment is also peer, self, and also by the teacher. So that's also a variety. And sometimes the students just make a portfolio for the university. The key is create friendly but challenging assessments. We cannot go easy on that part. They have to be friendly, but they have to be very, very challenging. Now, the first thing that I say there, a lot of us won't like, because we love to give tests. So tests and exams have to be fewer, and they have to be of different types. And the language, and nobody knows it better than Judy, the language is important. I remember when I was teaching at McMaster a few years back, in one of my questions, I used a word. I was teaching circular motion, and I said a Ferris wheel, and that, that's what the question was about. After the test, a student came up to me and said, I don't know what a Ferris wheel is. What was this question about? And that struck me. I said, oh my God, when I'm writing these questions, I don't even realize I'm using words which nobody has heard before. And I had to cancel that word because she was not the only one who did not know what the Ferris wheel was about. And that's only one example I'm giving. In Canada, the population is so diverse, especially in a place like Appleby where we have so many international students, we have to make a note and we have to be very careful to respect the other languages because we have to be aware that they may not know certain things. And I come across, now that I've become aware of it, every time when I'm making a test, I'm really conscious about that. I try my best and still there are some questions during the test and I'm always ready to help them with that word because, I'm, because I know that they may not know that thing at all. 
So what is it to be a 21st century teacher? Challenging. It's not easy. It's not easy at all because the generation gap is not of a generation anymore. Every year a child comes to your class, he's a year, it's, he's not a year different, he's a generation different. The other day my elder son said to us, he said, you know, my younger, his, my younger son Anuj, he said, we already have a generation gap. He's four years younger, but he's not four years younger. He's four generations younger to me. Because I used to be happy with my emails. He doesn't like emails. He never uses his cell phone as a phone. For him, it's obsolete. If I ask him to write an email, it's a huge task for him. They are used to texting and the Twitters. So that is, you see the difference here? So can you imagine when we are standing there in front of a class, every year the group that we see is so different from the one that has just gone by. Because every year you see a generation gap because the way technology and the world is going, it's not easy for a teacher to teach the same way. We have to find new ways every time we stand in front of a class. And it does require, and that's why I'm using this word courage again and again, because it does require courage to be with them. And we have to be ready for the ever-changing world. Not be afraid. Sudden changes are chaotic. It's chaos for us every year. But we are not afraid because we are aware. As long as you're aware of what you have to do, it becomes easier. So we have to learn to cope up with diversity. Now, diversity has a totally new meaning now. For us, diversity just meant different cultures. And I'm giving a talk on that actually in the next few conferences. What does diversity mean? Diversity is, yes, cultures, but the technolo technology, every student in my class is at a different level of technological skills. So we have to deal with that. I cannot assume that all of them that are coming to my class have the same skill level. I have to be aware of that, I have to be careful about that, and I have to give them support accordingly. Awareness of the changes and maturity, and because of that, every kid, every student in the class is at a different level. Readiness for the world, again, different levels. And that, those are not the only things, there are a lot more things. So, it has to be adaptable. So what does a 21st century teacher need to be? A 21st century teacher is not a teacher should actually be a facilitator. So how did I get here? Like I started with, a lot of academic freedom, professional development, I tried to do that a lot, state-of-the-art facilities, interaction with a lot of talented colleagues. And it not only just inside the school, but even outside. And of course, exposure to the world. Thank you. Thank you.